All right, now why don't you guys come to the front bench? Uh, who's here? All four of you come to the front bench. Okay. Who's sitting here? No, the front bench is empty, no? The, uh, you guys can come to the front. Okay, guys, now let's. Uh, so, uh, the, in the previous class, we have already gone through all the decision problems. I've given you a quick rundown on how. I've given you a quick rundown on. Uh, just shut that door, Garvin. Just shut that door properly. The, the noise is coming. That door should remain locked. You should use only one door. Uh, okay, so um, I, in the previous session, we have already given you the. Uh, here, here, okay. You guys come to the front. This bench. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with the rest when they come. Sit sit on the first bench. Okay, uh, so we've already covered uh, how to go through all the decision problems. Okay, how to solve each of the decision problems. Some of the solutions that have been given are uh, kind of arbitrary because we haven't had time to go through the detail of. Okay, fine. Never mind. All right. So uh, some of the decisions are haphazard uh, because we haven't had time to go through all the um, all the you know uh, the detailed logic. Okay. Um, okay. So let's continue with where we were. But we started, I think, with. Um, Maybe sit here, maybe. Where is this? Okay. All right. I think we uh, we started with uh, this this part, right? We started with time series data and cross sectional data, and we said that uh, we are not going to go through. Uh, I said that we are not going to go through the because we don't have time. All right. Everything is very rushed. So uh, I'm not covering stock concepts versus flow concepts, which I would normally cover at this point of time. Okay, uh, so I'm not um, going to cover that at this point of time. Okay, so um, we are going to go through this. Okay, uh, Hardik and uh, Srishti, you will lose points because you're talking and, and don't sit together. Maybe Hardik come and sit next to Kanika at least. So or sit on the extreme other side. Okay, so today is um, 31st, 31st, right? So 31st, uh, we are going to start with, now I need to write down these names. I still haven't started this. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do this. Um, so we were in this in this module essentially, right? We started with time series data and cross sectional data, and uh, uh, if, before I got to covering all the elements of this tracking markets using charts, I was uh, I had to move into this uh, coverage of decision problems so that you would have some guidance as to how to proceed. Okay. So uh, one thing I would say to you is uh, please make sure that uh, because when you guys came, I found that you are still not. Please follow the rules that I've given you uh, with respect to setting your risk ahead of time. Okay, don't just buy something or sell something and then find out then you're losing money and then you lose a lot of money and then eventually you uh, you don't know how to how to up, you you're kind of frozen because you don't know what to do. Okay, please follow these rules. This is the difference between professional trading and amateur trading. So you have the benefit of uh, you know uh, of the experience uh, that I've gone through and I'm giving you these rules. These rules cannot be violated. Shut it properly. This door should be kept. Can we lock this door? You can lock this. And then lock that. Just lock that so that we have only one door. Okay. So please make sure you follow. That. There is no question of uh, you have a lot of latitude when it comes to you have a lot of latitude when it comes to whether you're going to use fundamental analysis or technical analysis. Okay. I'm not going to force you to become a technical trader. Although at this point we are trading only as a, a technical trader, but and that's the reason for that is different. The reason for that is the reason for that is that we don't have time yet to go through 
uh, the uh, methodology of fundamental analysis. That's the only reason that I'm telling you to, 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 that I'm telling you to use technical analysis for the moment, because technical analysis is much simpler to learn. Okay, you can just work it like a surfer. So if you wanted to do fundamentals, you would do this kind of analysis. Okay, you can see here fundamental technical criteria. You can take. You have the link to Finviz in your in your document, so you can practice this okay so you can see all this stuff here can you see all this stuff price to cash and all this so this is what fundamental analysis is of course it's also about uh, your um, analysis of the industry so if you're analyzing a company like Facebook which is a digital advertising base so then you would look at what is the total share of digital advertising in in total advertising spend expenditure then what share of the market does Facebook have okay and this is the method uh, that you would follow to eventually derive an estimate of Facebook's revenues okay how much are they going to earn and then you start deducting the costs and eventually then you get to the profits okay and then you project those profits and that's where you get your val fair value of the stock which you've already done right you've already done the stock and I said that's how you so this is what fundamental analysis is all about okay but we don't have because this is a very vast body of material we haven't had time to go through it because but actually to some extent in your FM1 and FM2 you've already done all this ratio analysis so you can actually also apply this uh, even in your project okay it's just that I don't have time to tell you this uh, to teach you about fundamental in greater detail cover models and all that we have to do that later on so this is I'm not putting restrictions on you uh, with respect to uh, whether you should follow uh, whether you should be a technical trader or a fundamental trader okay uh, I'm not putting any restrictions on you on that okay all right so we'll just pause this and, and take our attendance but the point I'm trying to emphasize is that uh, I'm not putting restrictions as far as uh, your style of trading is concerned right so but at least you must make sure that what I've told you with respect to what I've told you with respect to when I decided that uh, when I gave you the example of that ITC um, ITC NSE I gave you that example of the of the ITC trade right where you go short I'm going to use a shorter time frame so please make sure that you don't fall into this trap so you have the point I'm trying to make is that uh, it's, it's a little haphazard here but the point I'm trying to make is you have freedom when it comes to whether you're going to be a technical trader or a fundamental trader I'm not pre preventing you here you can either follow technical analysis or fundamental analysis so I'm not going to put restrictions on that but uh, and so and what kind of technical style you want to evolve that also is uh, is up to you okay there are two basic styles momentum and mean reversion which we'll cover later but I'm not even going to put restrictions on all that that's where you bring in your own individual approach okay and remember at the end of the day it's all about your own individual approach because there is no standardized uh, methodology in finance okay because finance is not physics in physics you can't just bring your own own views to the table okay it's, it's what it is the theory is what it is so you have to agree with it so whereas in finance you have a lot of flexibility so I'm not going to put any restrictions on you but as far as this stuff is concerned uh, this the stuff I told you here that when I was telling you that day that uh, I wanted to look at I, the moment I looked at the chart I wanted to go short okay so I went short around here 270 but I put a stop before entering the trade as part of the trade planning okay I have to figure out now whether you want to put the stop here you want to put the stop here put the stop here that's a different matter that's your decision okay uh, that depends on the time frame you're covering but the point is this discipline of before entering the position you plan the maximum risk on that trade so here there is no option okay here you don't have any flexibility okay if you want to be like a professional trader you have to plan your risk and do it this way all right so do not just get into the trade then you have a big loss and then you don't know what to do if you want to trade like a professional trader on this point you have no flexibility you have to follow this rule okay where you have the flexibility is what should be the size of your stop that's for you to decide wider the stops you have the fewer trades you can do before you run out of money okay is everyone clear about this so please save yourself the lesson uh, sa save yourself the the heartache and the time of having to learn this lesson through your own mistakes uh, right remember there's a saying in the English language that uh, uh, wise people learn from other people's mistakes wise men learn from other people's mistakes and fools learn from their own 
okay but it's a little bit harsh because sometimes you can also learn from your own mistakes and not be a fool but uh, that the point is that basically you should take advantage of other people's mistakes and not make these kinds of stupid mistakes anymore okay so always plan your uh, pre-trade risk uh, plan your risk and then so that way you can remain in control of the process otherwise what happens because the market is as you will find out hopefully okay through the projects that you're doing this one and the next two projects the objective of these uh, projects is to give you a first-hand feel of how brutal and unforgiving unforgiving and how unpredictable and dynamic the market is okay to develop a first-hand feel of that so in this business if you don't keep control of the process the market will just clean you out okay so and the market has no mercy you will find very often that just after you eventually give up your position after losing huge amount of money and then eventually you feel you can't take it anymore the moment you uh, cut your position immediately the market moves in your favor okay so uh, therefore if you want to avoid all this heartache there's no need to be uh, emotional in this process okay so you should try to learn from these uh, rules so this is a golden rule which you should never violate always plan your risk ahead of time and ideally put the stop in the market you saw what I did with the ITC trade that day okay I put the stop in the market okay here maybe it was a different account okay so here because this is showing a long position so uh, the point is that you put the stop in the market and the other point that I would emphasize here is like here for instance if this is a showing a long position okay if I wanted to put a stop uh, there's one point which I forgot to emphasize in the last part of the video uh, in the previous class is that watch this element can you see what's written here time and force you understand what time and force is okay so by default so this is the part that I because I was in a hurry to uh, to finish that material in the last part of the previous class uh, I forgot I overlooked this okay so you will notice that in the previous video what I had was I'm going to show it in a different way because the position in this particular account is long ITC okay in that uh, trade that I showed you that I had gone short okay so because my position is long okay so I will have to put a, a stop order the other thing that you realize when we do these order types that obviously when I'm long the stop will be below the market or above the market if I'm long ITC look at the chart and visualize if I'm long ITC let's say let's say I've gone long at market my stop my stop order for ITC will be at a level that is below the current market or above the current market if my current position is long my current position here is long ITC you can see that you can see that here it's long 100 shares okay so if the position is long okay so I forgot to take attendance now you guys won't get attendance because uh, the time has already passed okay so let me take the attendance let me just pause this all right so what were we what was I saying I forgot now okay yeah so the question was uh, the question was whether uh, let me just set a time here for this so that people don't get restless 11.45 a.m. right? Okay. Hopefully this time it doesn't go off early. Okay. So the question was that if I'm long, let's say I'm long at the current market. Okay. Uh, we can, for this purpose, we can look at a slightly, now let's keep it here. So, 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 so if I'm long at the current market, okay. Uh, and uh, my stop, okay. On, uh, if my position is long, my stop is going to be below the market or above the market what is the objective of the stop and what if I'm long no if I'm long let's let's discuss it we can discuss it in general terms also but let's discuss it with respect to the long position okay it makes it a little easier to understand so if my current position is long what will be the objective of what will be the uh, uh, you know what is the objective of my stop of the stop order of the stop loss which we call a stop loss order but let's get used to market uh, professional terminology let's call it a stop order okay so what is the objective of the stop order if I'm long okay let's say I'm long at 267 okay what is the objective of the stop order what does it do for me yeah so he's saying to go short and stop your losses okay so but yeah so uh, yeah so it's, it's okay uh, essentially then you can put in a little more general and say essentially the objective of the stop order is to close out your position okay the objective of the stop order is to close out your position right so that you don't lose any more money on it all right 
So if I'm long now and I'm then obviously what is the what is my close out for the uh, the stop order will be a sell order or a buy order? <laughs> sell order, okay? Because only through a sell order can I cancel out a buy position or long position, okay? So if I want to sell now, you're saying that my stop. I'm just taking on the uh, contention that if I'm long at the current market of 267, that my stop should be above the market. Yes. That's what many people have said, okay? So now. We have already established that for a long position, the stop order will be a buy stop order, will be a buy order, uh, sorry, will be a sell order. Sorry, so uh, we have already established that we have to, uh, for, for a long position, okay, we want to, we are for a long position, the stop order will be a sell order, okay. So now the question is basically that if I say, and, and the other, pro other point is that, the objective of the stop order is to limit your losses okay so therefore now when you initially place the stop order it is to limit your losses okay that's why it's called a stop loss right but the reason we call don't call it a stop loss is in all situations it not need not limit your losses all right so the objective here is now you see what happens that if i'm long at 267 and let's say what you guys are saying the stop order should be higher than the market so let's say we we are accustomed to picking highs and lows so let's say my stop loss is at 273 okay or 274 so 267 to 274 so if i'm long at 267 and i sell at 274 am i losing money or making money yeah. making money so this can't be a stop order to start with so we are talking about a situation where we just start out by placing our trade okay we have just placed our trade we have just gone long at the current market okay and so now we have a long position of 100 shares so this cannot be the right answer that stop order should be above the market because if you sell it because when you're long your natural your initial position is long the objective of the stop order is to close out your position so that you can't lose any more money right but if you place the stop order above the market then you're not going to lose money on that you're going to be making money on that are you following yes sir right so initially therefore to limit your losses that means when do you lose money you can think of it this way that if you go along at the current market okay then when do you lose money when the price goes further below right so eventually basically that that you from that logic you can figure out therefore the stop must be below the market at some point below the market now you can place it at 264 or you want to get place it at 263 whatever it is but the point is it will have to be below the market because if you have gone long at market and uh, so you're long you have a long position so that loses money only when the price falls from the current market are you following the logic yes sir. okay it, or 260. Yeah. Why should it be short position? Because if you place, look at uh, your position when you set the amount of, remember that one of the things you have to define when you are placing in order is what is the amount of share, number of shares. By default here the system is using 100. But that doesn't mean that you have to take the default. You have to decide that. That figure has to be decided actively by you. Okay. So therefore, when you place, let's say here, I'm long at 267. Let's say I'm long 100 shares. Okay. So when I place the sell order, do, should I click on the bid or the ask? When I sell the stop, when I place the stop order, when I want to place the stop order, should I click on the bid or the ask? Am I a price taker in this situation or a price maker? Price. I'm a price taker, right? So the market maker is making these prices. Now, what am I going to do? My position is long. What am I going to do through the sell uh, stop order? I'm going to be selling or buying? I'm going to be selling. So when I sell at, I have to sell at the market maker's bid or offer? Bid. So therefore, when you're placing a stop order, you should already have an idea from this logic that so nothing has to be memorized here. everything is logical okay you can see that your position is a long position so therefore your stop order has to be a sell order is everyone following if you if you don't follow at any point of time you should uh, interrupt and ask a question sir. okay yeah but sir why will we uh, gain execute a sell order because when we are placing a stop it is uh, already at the buying order so we already at the buying order when we buy the stock give him the mic let him use the mic
when we buy the stocks, then only we put on a stop limit for uh, yeah, stock yeah, order. Yeah. Yeah. So we won't uh, have to uh, execute another sell order for that. No, no. Here you can already see that there is a position. Can you see that? Yes, sir. There is a hundred shares position, right? Okay. So you are saying for after this, uh, like on uh, while you were buying uh, and going long on hundred, so you didn't put a stop order on this. No, no. What I'm saying to you is that right now you can see that you have a long position of hundred, yeah. and you don't have a stop on this. Okay. So you need to place a stop, right? So that's what I'm saying. If, if you already have a stop, then you don't have to place any more stops. But right now you can clearly see because if you had a stop on this, it would have shown here. This stop would have shown over here. Okay. Underneath this position, underneath the ITC row, the stop would have been showing. Okay. So that's why we'll come to the time and force part also as well. Is everyone following so far? Okay. What happened? You're not following. Yeah, what were you saying? You were saying that it will go to it will become a square position. Sir, going long means we are holding a share for a long term. No, 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 no. That long is not like long and uh, short period of time. Long means uh, we have defined it by purchase of base asset. I don't think we have come to the technical definition yet, but I think we covered it. Long means purchase of base asset. Okay, so here when we say long and short as positions, so when long and short is being used to qualify a position, okay, then obviously it means long is uh, long means purchase of base asset, and a short means sale of base asset, and then obviously the opposite you've done the opposite to the terms asset, okay. So, but when we use long and uh, short to qualify time periods, then obviously it means for a long time period or a short time period. Is this clear? No, 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 no. Stop. This is a universal rule that whenever you are going long, the stop, a stop sell order will always be below, assuming that you have gone long at the market. Okay. A stop sell order will always, or actually, that's a general definition because we are going to discuss one type, one type of entry strategy where you go long via stop orders. Okay. So the definition of a stop order is such that. It essentially buys, we are coming to that, I'm sort of preempting that definition, we're going to cover order types, but essentially what I'll tell you is, stop order essentially buys at a price, uh, executes a trade at a price worse than the, I think we have these definitions here once we are covering it. Um, we are going to cover stop orders, so we have we are going to cover initially three types of uh, okay so essentially the way you think about a market or uh, about a stop order we are discussing stop orders now so we're going to sort of uh, cover it in a slightly haphazard way the idea behind a stop order is that a stop order will it, it can be when i'm using the word stop order generally that means it includes buy stop and sell stop okay you can either say buy stop sell stop or you can say stop buy stop sell Okay, it has the same meaning. Okay, that it's a two. It has two things. When you say buy, stop, sell, stop, it means that first it's a stop order, and the second that it's it's actually performing a buying action or a selling auction action. Okay, so uh, the idea behind it, the definition of a stop order essentially, if you want to conceptually be clear about a stop order, what it is is that it executes the trade, whatever be the trade, buy or sell, it executes the trade at a price less favorable than the current market. This is the way you should think about the stop order. Okay, this is a general definition of a stop order. Just think about it first. That a stop order is something because remember, stop order can only be of two types. Either it's a stop buy or it's a stop sell. Okay, there are only two types of stop orders. Okay, so uh, there are some other qualifications like stop limit and all, but pure stop orders only two types, which is buy and sell. Every order is only of two types in that sense. Okay, so now the basic idea behind a stop order is that a stop order will. The characteristic of a stop order is that it will enter the, it will execute the trade, okay, at a price which is less favorable than the current market, okay. This is the general definition of a stop order. Think about, think about it this way: a stop order always executes the trade, whatever be the trade, buy or sell, at a price less favorable than the current market, okay. So if you just remember this, I was trying to work out a different other, uh, you know, I was trying to get you guys to come to this idea from a different angle. 
through this position but now if you come back here if you understand the definition I was I was actually trying to before giving you the definition I was trying to get you guys to understand the definition through examples okay but if you understand this definition of a stop order a stop order in a way you are just memorizing the definition a stop order will always execute uh, the uh, uh, will also always execute the trade whatever be the trade buy or sell at a price less favorable than the current market okay so uh, therefore if you see obviously if I'm long at 267 okay and I want to place a stop sell order that stop sell has to be below 267 because it's much better for me to sell at 267 than to sell at 263 are you following okay I'll just complete the logic and then you can understand so in a way it's better not to come to the definition first better to understand it logically that what I what the logic that we went through earlier that I'm long ITC I need to place a stop order so the question I asked you was whether the stop should be above the market or below the market now the objective is to stop of the stop initially is to limit your losses yes. okay at the initial point when you have placed the trade you have just placed the trade the objective is to limit your losses so if you're some of you said that the stop should be above the market now this stop would have been a stop sell because my position is long so if I'm long at 267 and I sell at 274 then I'm not losing money I'm making money so this can't be a stop uh, order for this position right so the initial stop order for this position has to be at some point where I'm limiting my losses so I'll have losses it's much better to understand the definition in this way because it's more logical that if you have a long position you will only have if and assuming you go long at market okay all long trade short trades everything is at market if I have a long position I'm only losing money when uh, the market is dropping from the mar current market levels otherwise I'm not losing money if I go long at the current market of 267 I lose money when the uh, price drops from the current market relative to the current market right so therefore wherever I place my stop because the objective of my stop is to limit my losses it has to be at some point below the current market I think it's much better to understand it this way rather than to understand the, later on once we understand it this way then you'll remember the technical definition of a stop order okay but uh, it's better to understand it this way are you following now everybody yes, what happened Tanya you also came in late I marked you absent but did I marked you absent because I didn't even see you but did you come late or not yes, okay you came after the 40 minute uh, outline okay fine so I marked you absent because I didn't even see you okay so I only saw Ganotra and Gulati coming in late okay so um, okay so are you following now that the stop order has to be below because the objective this is how the logic should progress okay the stop order the objective of the initial stop order okay which is why it's called a stop loss order in, in sort of slang uh, language okay that uh, the objective is to stop your to limit your losses now when you have gone long at market losses will only start when prices drop from the current market not when they rise when they rise you're making money when they drop from the current market only then you have losses so the stop loss on a long position has to be below the uh, market the stop order on a long position has to be below the market and then you reverse the logic for a short position that when I went short the other day when I went short at around 270 whatever the price was 272 or something okay and then I said I placed a stop at 274 okay why did I do that because when I'm going short at 272 I start to have losses only when prices go above that current market level okay so therefore my stop had to be somewhere above this and that's why I told you that you could have placed a stop anywhere I was going short at 271 let's say and then I could have placed it either here okay which is what I did but you could have also placed it here you could have also placed it here okay are you following the logic when I went short on the other uh, on the other uh, login the other day the previous day is everyone following so far okay so uh, so this is where we are now uh, so so this is the first point that I want to emphasize that in in line with because I saw some confusion when you guys came about where you placed the stop okay so the point I'm trying to tell you uh, to emphasize here is that you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you will trade as even as a technical trader okay uh, and whether you want to use fundamentals or technicals to form your decision but where you should not have any flexibility adopt this as a golden rule that before you enter any trade you should have already planned your maximum loss on the trade and ideally you should put the stop into the market 
okay so that you have nothing to worry because sometimes you know what might happen is you might think that i'll watch the market okay i might put my i might go short at 271 and i don't want to put the stop into the system okay you'll see what i mean by putting the stop into the system but i i don't put in the, so it, the system remains like this okay the system remains like this i'm sh i'm long 100 shares and we can take the long example now with what the system has so i'm long 100 shares but you don't see a stop under this itc row which means i've not entered a stop into the system so what am i doing i am actually just saying that okay i am long itc at 267 i will get out when the market drops below this 263 264 but i'm not putting the order into the system okay because maybe i want to reserve some flexibility now what might happen the reason you should not do this and these are all golden rules now these you can't violate the reason you shouldn't do this is because something might happen the power might go out you know your internet connection might go out and then when the market is suddenly crashing below 264 then you can't enter your order because you don't have power or you don't have the internet or some other thing has happened or there's some earthquake in your uh, building you have to run down the stairs so all kinds of stuff can happen okay so you therefore you should always place the system uh, you should place the order into the system at the time that you enter the order okay in fact one good type of order which we hopefully will have time to cover you can research that on the um, on um, ib uh, which is there's a some concept called a bracket order which is basically where you enter the uh, entry uh, it's a limit you usually works with limit orders okay so you enter the uh, you know uh, price at which you want to uh, put on the position at the same time you enter the position uh, price at which you want to take profits and at the the price at which you want to stop losses all three enter together so everything is taken care of okay so you have the position you'll have the position later on when the market goes to your level and then you will automatically have a two-sided bracket around that order that's why it's called a bracket order so one price at which so essentially let's say if i've gone long here i would put in a bracket order essentially to go long at uh, you know you can put it against the market also against the uh, current market also order as well so if i go long at this current market the bracket order will essentially there'll be one stop at 264 and there'll be maybe a take profit at wherever i want to put it if i want to put it at 310 okay so that's called a bracket because it's on both sides yeah i'll show you one sec so but first let me show you the the golden rule that i was telling you about that you must always put the order into the market first of all you must limit the losses pre-plan your risk on the trade okay and also put the order into the market that's where we'll come to this point okay so now i have gone long at 267 so i have to take a decision where i want to put my stop in this case i'm assuming that any new low so anything below 264 okay so i'm just taking it as 264 in practice you'll have to read out the new low so what i'm saying is that okay i'm going long because obviously again you see the logic of it i'm going long because obviously that means i feel that this downtrend has ended okay so the moment it makes a new low that's proving my assumption wrong because if this downtrend has ended then it should not make any new lows are you following my logic yes sir so therefore the logical place for me to place my stop is below this just below this as soon as a new low is made it means that i'm wrong so i should get out my assumption was incorrect about the end of the downtrend and therefore i should get out are you following the logic okay so i place it at 264 so what am i going to do i already have this long position so this, this is a long position so the stop order will be a sell order or a buy order Sell order. sell order okay and am i a price taker or a price maker i'm a price taker and these prices are made by market makers who are price makers so when i am going to sell i'm going to sell on the bid or the offer i'm going to sell on the bid so therefore when i'm placing a stop sell i'll just click that okay it comes out with some default uh, items but one thing you can see clearly because i click, click the bid it came out with a sell are you following if i had clicked the offer it will come out with a buy so it's get given me some defaults okay so this first thing i'll do is i'll check the position size if my position here was 700 i would have had to change this to 700 okay but right now because my position here is 100 i make sure that it's the same position size okay now what i do is what is the position i said 264 okay and so the way the system works is uh, the the nse uh, trading works is it's five paise so 26395 are you following the logic break below 264 so 26395 is the break below is the first break below 264 because 264 is not a break below 264 
So I can't place it at 264. I have to place it at 263.95. Are you following? No, because good question. But what is the rule of a downtrend? Lower lows. Lower lows. So is 264 lower than 264? Yeah. So what have I done? Two six. It's now. At, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. It's 267. I've gone long at 267, which means I believe the downtrend is over. So logically, my stop should be the moment the market makes a new low. The market is essentially telling you that your view about the downtrend being over is not correct. Because the downtrend is continuing, that means. Because lower lows means the downtrend is continuing. Right? Is that clear? Are you following? So the reason it has to be at 263.95 is because 263.95, when you're trading in 5 paisa increments, is the first instance of a lower low than 264. At 264, you don't have a lower low. You can't say that 264 is lower than 264. It's only equal to 264. That's not the definition of a downtrend. That means lower low, not equal to the lowest previous low. Are you understand? Are you able to follow the difference? The word is lower low. So equal to the previous uh, lowest low is not the same as lower low. Yes, yes. Are you convinced? Are you convinced, Chok? Chok is still not convinced. Yes. Are you following my logic? I am following your logic, but I think you put it at 266. Here it put it at 265. We should put it at 264. You are saying that it won't be a lower low until and unless it is less than 264. Because the lowest low till now I have been 264. Yeah, yeah. We actually we have to read it from here, but I am assuming that it's 264. Yeah. Here, for, for the sake of argument, let's assume that this lowest low so far is 264. Okay. So that's why my logic is that my because I'm going long, which means I'm saying that the downtrend is over. So, what is the uh, first warning that I get that the down, my, that my assumption is wrong? That is when the market makes a new low. When the market makes a new low means you have a pattern of lower lows, which means the downtrend is continuing. Okay. So, after I put on my trade, the market has established a pattern of lower lows again, which means the downtrend is continuing, which means my assumption is wrong. So, therefore, logically, I should exit my position. So, I should only exit not at 264, but 263.95. Because 263.95 is actually lower than 264, but 264 is not lower than 264. Are you following? Is everyone following? Yes. Yes, yes Saruni, you are looking confused. I got more confused by this long discussion. Yes, yes. 264 is not lower than. <laughs> this confused more people. 264 is not lower than 264. Okay, clear now? Chok, are you clear? Okay, listen to it once again. And so, therefore, it's 263.95. Okay, so 263.95 is set. Yes. Okay. The other thing now, this can't be a limit order. Okay. You got you. These are all defaults. I need to change this to a stop order. Okay. Then the other thing that I forgot to mention in the other uh, towards the last part of the video on the other day uh, in the previous classes, this should not be day because then it should be GTC. Okay. Which is this? What does GTC stand for? Good till cancelled. Okay. So GTC order. Okay. This is what you need. So if you have a GTC order now, you can go on holiday because hmm? day is only for that day. Oh, sorry. One minute. One minute. One. Minute. Let me just cancel this. I didn't. I don't need this. Okay. So if you go to day, you'll see this. See what does day say? Read what is day. What the day say? Okay, so day order, what does the day order mean? So you have to be careful about this. You can go into the system and change the defaults. Okay, but uh, what this means is essentially that if you place a day order, okay, this, uh, this order will expire at the end of the day, which means next morning when you log in, the order will no longer be there. Okay, so if they have put a stock uh, while buying, yeah. So, and it was a day order. So, then it will uh, work, that stop won't work after it. Yeah. Next day it won't be there. And we have to put on a You have to put it on again. 
so this is where you get the benefit like I remember using some other software like Motila Lostwal and all that earlier where these brokers don't have uh, most Indian brokers don't have at least they uh, didn't uh, never used to have this facility of placing GTC orders okay because the native NSE system doesn't accept G most most exchanges don't accept NSE uh, uh, as a native exchange software at the software level exchange software level they only accept day orders but what this is happening is this GTC facility is being given to you by IB because IB software because this remember you're dealing with IB software you're not dealing with NSE software you're dealing with IB and IB is dealing with NSE software as a technology interface try to understand it this way okay you have to understand technology as well so Sukriti and um, I love to deduct marks for Sukriti and uh, Anjum also major party going on there okay what can we get Anjum to the front bench uh, come to the front bench no don't waste time now just come to the front bench just come to the front bench and leave your phone over here I want to look at your phone leave the phone here come to the front bench then let me just write down your names okay uh, where were we going Sir? yeah only once only once okay so you have that uh, so I do have some mercy okay all right okay now let's get back to the discussion so GTC please remember this okay you can go into the system and check what happened to you you're not following the instructions okay uh, and uh, so do you remember this thing I made this mistake in the previous session because I was in a hurry okay so make sure that your orders are all set to GTC because GTC is always superior to day because you can always when you have a view of that you want to cancel the order and you really should not cancel a stop order until the position is closed okay are you following so this is what now you see if I transmit this order where's the phone give me your phone no I can't get up <laughs> this thing will okay all right okay so uh, now you see that if I transmit this order now everything is okay it's a sell stop it's a sell order it's a stop sell it's the same amount of shares as my long position I made sure that it's a GTC order okay by clicking this is called time in force so GTC is time in force is actually a variable okay uh, in a sense it's just like a string variable okay it holds strings okay you got to think in terms of variables and software and things like that so time in force is one of the fields that you have to enter into an order whenever you're dealing with a sophisticated system like this particular TWS it will ask you what type of time in force value do you want do you want day do you want GTC there are many other values okay fill or kill all kinds of stuff you can see if you go down okay you can see all this um, GT, uh, good till uh, I don't know, take good till date uh, I, I don't even know what DTC is actually so uh, we can you can read about these order types and on the IP web page but there are also other options like fill or kill etc okay so the point is mainly you need to worry about day orders and GTC orders and you should always place GTC orders. it's the safest bet okay all right uh, you can always do that if you don't want to sell the entire hundred shares at 63 at, at uh, whatever this price with 265.90 now how did this get to 265.90 I thought we needed 263.95 okay so this you have to make sure that you check the price also uh, 263.95 okay so uh, you can always place that so then in that case your risk is not fully closed so if you have a hundred shares long at 267 and at 263.95 you want to exit only 50 shares then you still have a balance of 50 shares left you can set another stop for that you can set another for but then your uh, total loss will have to be calculated taking the average exit price on those two stop orders okay so you don't have a clear uh, uh, you can calculate that okay you can always do that all right yeah, yeah give her the mic well, let, let her finish let her finish yeah there are other questions. If we put it on day uh, rather than GTC, so uh, if the price doesn't reach 263.95 for that day, then also the stocks will fill out. Yeah, why should it fill? The stock will only then fill when it. Doesn't matter if we choose day or, or we choose GTC for the, the stock. Okay, good question. Okay, why should we? Why am I insisting on GTC? Okay, because what are you concerned about? Okay, when you place this order, 
at 267 and 264 okay why did you place this order below 264 because you as soon as the market goes below 264 that is the sign signal to you that your assumption is wrong and you to exit your position so now does it really matter whether it goes below 264 today or tomorrow or day after doesn't matter right even if it stays here the, ne the next two days it just stays at 267 and then on the third day it drops below 264 the implications for your view are the same right so the reason you need a gtc order and not a day order is because it's the breaking of this level that is important not the day when it happens so if you place a day order it will only be there for today next morning the order will disappear so that's why you need a gtc order okay so are you following is everyone following okay you may find that if you guys are trading on smc and all that you use some other software okay you're also using so you may want to check whether they have a concept of gtc order so the last time i checked on motilal oswal and all these people they didn't have gtc okay so this is one of the problems that you have in, but if you look at most us brokers they will have all provide gtc order. this is actually a broker functionality the exchange does not provide gtc orders the exchange only accepts day order so what the broker is actually doing is the broker software the broker's programming takes care of it they see that i've entered a gtc order so the broker will watch the level for me and if this 264 level is broken doesn't matter when it's broken maybe three days later six days later seven days later the broker is always watching that 264 level for me and the moment it breaks the broker will transmit a market sell order into the exchange server are you following the logic so this you got to also understand how the architecture works you should understand this architecture we had a brief discussion the previous day on on servers and co-location and high frequency trading you know how the broker software what the brokers wanted to locate the server close to the nsc server and that's why the nsc also got a very big penalty from um, sebi right because of, we discussed co-location yeah okay so uh, yeah but, tarun you have, still have your question okay no uh, you were, had a question when tanya was speaking well let him go first then we'll come to you okay. yeah so now what we do is now let me just complete this before you start your question the job is not over yet you have to set all your stops and then transmit it then you get all this uh, messages okay you can just override and transmit and now when you get the green signal order is waiting to trigger on the nse which means ib as far as ib is concerned ib has given you the green signal which means he's saying to you that okay i've got it i've got your order i'm watching your order for you okay so now you're complete so this is where this is the part that i'm saying that here to avoid any painful uh, learning of lessons this gospel you should take from me before doing any trade ever you should plan your risk ahead of your trade okay so here i decided to go along at 267 but before that i planned that i would exit below 264 but i'm only losing about three rupees per share okay and then i can size the position depending on how much total money i want to lose on this particular trade which should also be related to your total capital in some systematic way it should be a very low percentage of your total capital <laughs> these golden rules of risk management and position sizing and order entry you should always follow if you can do that it will give you a, it will save you a lot of heartache a lot of money also okay and it will keep you in control of the process you have to be in control of the process because this market is uh, is like a, you know it's, it's a fearsome entity actually so if you don't stay in control uh, the market will just uh, to carry you out okay so you have to be very careful so this always now the order is in the market a gtc order is in the market protecting your maximum loss capping your ma maximum loss now you don't have anything else to worry about your defense is totally taken care of and now if you have upside now on this position that i have if i have upside if my view is correct that the market is going to go back up to 311 and higher than 311 then i can enjoy the profit i don't have to worry about anything my downside risk is the problem the defense is the problem are you following my uh, uh, point okay so now this is what i wanted to say on this don't play around on this this system you always follow pre-plan your risk enter the determine this maximum loss okay enter the order into the system as a gtc order then you're you know set to go okay all right okay yes Tarun. now what is your question sir how is your order minus 5000 for the dps no, no, I didn't get you. Minus? How is your position is minus 5,000 in 
that means i must have sold tcs before buying yeah okay so you are talking about short selling okay so what he is talking about is short selling because i must have entered into the system earlier and done a 5000 some other day i must have done this trade okay that i sold 5000 shares of tcs so uh, what tarun is asking is how did you manage to sell 5000 shares of tcs without buying okay so this thing is called short selling okay which we have to get used to in 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 uh, the short selling is pretty new in india okay um all right so but then in in general in finance you have to get used to this concept that you don't have to buy something before selling it okay you can just sell it okay and the way you want to think about it is basically that yeah that if we want to look at it this way we can put some of it is here okay okay um there's no need to buy uh, this part of the note is with you guys so no need to buy uh, before selling any base asset this is a general conceptual idea in finance okay as as a general concept i'm just going to write this down as a general concept now there may be some restrictions in certain markets okay like in india you had restrictions on short selling for a long time other markets there may be all kinds of restrictions but as a general concept okay when you the way you want to think about finance and the way you want to think about financial markets okay you do not want to think about having to buy before selling any base asset okay so essentially uh, the way you think about it is i don't need this uh, the way you think about it is that so this is a very important general concept in finance okay whatever is sold is borrowed and sold and whatever is bought is bought and invested okay okay are you following the logic okay so essentially you can think of it as buying a house with 100% debt okay so what are you doing if you are buying a house in india what are you buying you are buying uh, let's say a piece of real estate okay your base asset is a house okay and what is your terms asset indian rupees the correct answer is indian rupees okay so your terms asset is indian rupees and uh, your base asset is a house okay so if you think about this example here what you are doing is whatever is sold is borrowed and sold you are selling indian rupees you borrow the entire value of the house okay you may not get a housing loan in fact on those terms but let's assume you can okay so you borrow the entire amount of the house value okay and then you sell the indian rupees so you borrow the indian rupees and sell it and then what do you do with the house the moment you bought the house you you invest it in the sense that you make it make sure it starts earning some return so you put it out on rent okay this is the idea in this particular example okay this is how you would apply this general principle in this particular example are you following what i'm saying okay so this is the general idea you want to keep in finance okay that in financial markets that we don't have to necessarily go long before we sell something you can go short okay and that is called short selling okay so this is basically you can actually check on the ib website they have a lot of interesting guides as well they have a guide to short selling okay the idea mainly is that you borrow the shares and you deliver because when you sell something obviously you have to deliver the shares if i'm selling 5000 shares of tcs i have to deliver to the guy who bought the guy who bought those 5000 shares of ccs i have to deliver those shares to him remember because the sale a contract is a, is a uh, financial a transaction in a financial market is a contract to exchange assets so when i'm selling 5000 shares my part of the bargain is that i have to give him 5000 shares of tcs and his part of the bargain is that he has to give me the equivalent amount in indian rupees that is the exchange of assets okay so when it comes to the settlement date the actual exchange of assets will have to, will take place remember all the stuff that you studied transaction dates and settlement dates what happens on the settlement date
okay so therefore I'll have to deliver 5,000 shares now where will I get 5,000 shares if I don't have them okay so I have to borrow those 500 five, so there is concept of there's a concept of stock borrowing okay we have just started that in India okay uh, concept of stock borrowing where basically people who are holding shares of the TCS for longer periods like institutional investors they can lend out those shares so you have a fee for that stock borrowing okay but the point is you can borrow the stock so what I'll do is now I've sold 5,000 shares I will borrow 5,000 shares through the stock borrowing mechanism okay so I'll borrow the 5,000 shares and I will deliver to my counterparty on this trade is this clear so as long as you have a facility for borrowing the underlying asset if you have a facility for any market where you can borrow the base asset you should be able to go short do short selling where you don't have something but you still sell it okay are you following now in this particular market you might find that uh, sometimes when you're trying to sell you might find that it gives you a message saying there's not enough stock available to uh, for short selling okay so in this particular case because I have a minus 5,000 in TCS that means when I went short there was no such restraint that 5,000 shares of TCS were available for borrowing sometimes what might happen is that uh, in certain stocks like where, what's happening in a lot uh, in Tesla in the US because so many people are going short Tesla that they're not enough stock to borrow so there's a problem with uh, you know a supply of uh, you know Tesla shares for borrowing so therefore that is placing a limit so that's a situation that can develop in any particular market like I remember I don't know which one whether it's ITC or some other stock which access bank or something which I was trying to sell and I got a message saying that uh, there isn't enough stock available to sell for not enough stock borrowing is available etc stock borrowing facility etc so you might get this message message in certain stocks okay that depends that's a situation that uh, differs from uh, you know time to time and it depends depends on the individual stock and the situation in that particular market are you following these are all different markets the market for TCS stock is a different market the market for access bank stock is a different market the market for Tesla shares is a different market why are they different market because at least one of the two is, is different the moment I move from a market for TCS shares to the market for Axis Bank shares the terms asset is the same but the base asset has changed so because any of the assets change we call it a different market okay are you following so we have two questions okay Tanya yes give her the mic we'll come to you Garvit also has a question okay. yeah so we never came to Parol actually no 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 those are two different things what you are talking about is delivery and intraday those are two different things but sir the method is the same that we can hold the shares for long no 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 holding the shares is nothing uh, not the same as GTC GTC is a time and force is a value for the field time and force of the field you understand you guys have done databases this is almost like a database you have records in a database and you have fields okay so the records are the rows and the columns are the fields okay so essentially when you're entering an order okay that has certain fields certain aspects of the order have to be specified right so one of the things that you have to specify is time and force how long so when you're talking about delivery and intraday that is referring to shares where you either when intraday when it talks about intraday those are sh sh uh, trades where you do not uh, intend to actually settle the trades although in actual fact there is conceptually you have to think of it as settlement but you are closing out your position within the day that's what it basically means okay so delivery in intraday is actually not good terminology because even the ones you are doing intraday they are also being delivered it's just that try to understand this concept okay uh, what she's raising I'm just coming to Tanya's question okay so short selling is essentially selling base asset that you do not currently uh, have a long position in is this clear this is called short selling so basically you don't own it I don't want to say own because it's kind of slang layman's language the technical language is I do not have a long position in that asset but I'm still selling it that's what Tarun was asking how did you manage to go short 5,000 shares of TCS okay so now coming to what Parul is talking about okay 
delivery and intraday this is actually a bad classification okay again this is one of the problems uh, not just in india all over the world people use um, words without thinking about the conceptual uh, implications of that when i say delivery and intraday if i classify all the people in this room into boys and girls that means i can say the boys are not girls and the girls are not boys is that clear okay so if i classify trades into delivery and intraday that means i'm saying that in intraday trades there's no delivery is that fair okay this is actually not correct what happened not clear any kind of a taxonomy that you have okay if i classify one of one of the golden rules of taxonomy is that your taxa have to be mutually exclusive the taxa are the categories so if i divide vip students into mca students bca students llb students llm students that means the llm students are not bca students mca students are not llb students is that clear so any kind of a, if it's a good classification sometimes you have bad classification or bad terminology okay so uh, if it's a good classification then the uh, these are called these categories okay we, uh, we are using big words but this are these are categories taxa okay so th the any classification that you do okay everyone understands classification any kind of taxonomy this is a taxonomy of vip students bca students bca student etc etc so in any taxonomy the categories or the taxa should be mutually exclusive if it's a good taxonomy if it's not mutually exclusive Uh, then if i say students with glasses bca students if i create categories like this now some of the bca students might have glasses so now i have created a problem because the categories are not mutually exclusive right so therefore a good taxonomy will have uh, mutually exclusive uh, categories so here what the problem with this tax what she's talking about is that there's a taxonomy of trades trades are being classified by the smc system into delivery versus intraday this is not a good classification or the good labeling because if i do this the moment i classify into categories like delivery and intraday that means i'm saying intraday is not delivery right so there's no delivery happening in intraday trades this is actually not correct this is actually day trading versus uh, not day trading that would have been a better classification so what the intraday means essentially is actually day trading and what is the definition of day trading that we went through no position at the end of the day okay no position at the end of the day that's all it means you can trade 60 million shares but there has to be 60 million in 60 million out no position at the end of the day that's the definition of day trading so the correct definition actually in this the classification should have been okay uh, not day trading okay this is a crude way of putting it not day trading or we call this position trading sometimes in the market this is called position trading <coughs> the market lingo is this is called position trading so in the market we normally distinguish between day trading and position trading what position trading means is carrying positions beyond the day that's basically what it means okay so not so if you think of day trading understand the definition of day trading that will be easier uh, you cannot so the moment i say what uh, if i know what day trading is then i know what not day trading is the moment i carry a position beyond the trading day if i close the trading day with a position either short or long that means immediately i am in the not day trading category are you following so keep the definition of day trading in your mind and then you can understand what is not day trading and so position trading is not day trading okay so the reason this classification is wrong okay delivery versus intraday the reason this this classification is wrong is it's a bad labeling or bad taxonomy is because in intraday trade if you do 60 million in 60 million out okay you are doing day trading okay which is intraday okay but all those shares are going to get delivered those 60 million in that you bought those shares will come into your account in practice there may be a net uh, settlement okay so but in practice it conceptually what is happening is all those trading all those uh, net shares of 60 million is coming into your account and all the 60 million is going away from your account so your net position in shares at the end of the day is actually zero is this clear so this is not a very good taxonomy actually the correct way to define it is actually that there is intraday trading versus position trading but then again this is not connected to the idea that i was talking about that is gtc 
this is different from GTC GTC is something which clarif which is a time in force field for an order okay so the difference so the order options that you have like instead of GTC I could have made it a day order okay which only so GTC and day order these are basically time in force values okay these are string values you want to you know what a string is right you use Excel you know what a string is string is text okay so in the programming language string is just text okay so this is just a, this will have a string value this particular field time and force so GTC and uh, and uh, day order only means that if I put day then the system will only watch this order for on a day basis and it will stop after that so there are many other types it's not just intraday and uh, de delivery okay there are many other like I said fill or kill okay many types of orders we can come up with we can look at the list okay there are many ways you can fill this field here yeah, time and force okay um, so GTC good till date the GTD is another one you can specify a date maybe up to 15 days from now you can specify a date then you can put GTD these are all the different ways to fill this field of time and force this is only a way this is only a way of instructing the system as to how long will you watch this order okay so again if you come back to delivery versus intraday what will happen is this doesn't include the concept of GTC versus GTD you understand the difference between GTC and GTD GTC means good till cancelled that means you watch it until I come and actively cancel the order okay so it can run for five years actually in practice they only watch it for one year that is just a system uh, hack that they've done but technically conceptually they're supposed to watch it for like even 20 years because it's good till cancelled okay but GTD I can place GTD for the next seven days maybe for 15 days 20 days 21 days now that's slightly different from GTC because after 21 days if I place GTD for 21 days after 21 days it will cancel it okay so now you can see all the nuances now just by saying delivery you don't capture all those nuances all you're doing with delivery by what you're trying to indicate is stuff that is beyond that is not intraday trading it's essentially a net position anyway you're carrying a net position so the correct definition is really to do position trading or intraday or day trading this is clear okay now to also understand the difference between GTC and uh, this this concept of day trading or not day trading versus GTC and uh, uh, GTD and day or fill or kill all these these are actually telling the system how long you should watch the order okay that's why the field is time and force okay so this is very specifically about time and force are you clear now okay yes Tanya what is your question so my question then, was that you bought 5,000 uh, that you sold 5,000 shares yeah you went uh, you did short selling so is it necessary to buy 5,000 shares within the same day or we can go GD so we can do it any time like this again is a this depends conceptually you should be able to do it for as long as possible okay but if the person is calling again it really depends on the how long the shares are available to borrow if because remember you have now borrowed shares okay so if there is a situation where the shares are being called back by the lender of the shares if the lender of the shares calls back and there is no net supply so only the broker will arrange this uh, borrowing facility now if there's a situation like you have sometimes in cases like Tesla where there's a shortage of stock for borrowing okay so if TCS also develops that kind of situation okay then the broker might inform you that your stock is not no longer available for borrowing you better close it now that I'm not able to ar arrange stock for borrowing beyond say the next settlement so you now you'll have to close your position so that is a market imposed uh, constraint that you have no way of predicting when that will happen and that depends on the market dynamics it's basically connected to how long are the shares available for borrowing so can we put a stop loss in this case also yeah yeah stop loss is not connected to this idea of short selling idea of short selling is only connected to this itself that short selling is selling a base asset that you do not currently have a long position in okay let me clarify that by borrowing it and selling it okay that's why I said that it generally in finance when we want to think about transactions in financial markets we want to have this concept that I don't have to have it to sell it I can borrow it and sell it conceptually now in practice I may go and try to sell Tesla and I find that 
there's just not enough tesla stock for borrowing in that case it's too bad as far as tesla is concerned okay but i may come to tcs and find that okay tcs stock is available for borrowing so i can sell short sell tcs okay but conceptually you should have it in your mind that whatever is sold is borrowed and sold that will put you into the position of starting to think about the financing cost of your transactions okay so if you're borrowing something which is producing a which is costing you 15 percent to borrow and then when you buy the asset and you invest it somewhere and that is only returning 10 percent then on that carry itself okay that interest differential that you're losing money so this stuff whatever you have bought had better start shooting up in price real fast because every day you're getting killed because your borrowing is costing you 15% and your investment is returning only 10%. So that whatever that stuff it is that you bought, that stuff had better start going up in price real fast. Are you following my logic? So you need to make a price appreciation return very quickly. This is clear. Just like when you buy a lot of houses like you see in the Indian National Housing Bank data, there's a lot of ready to move in housing which is not occupied. Okay, the numbers are huge actually. So those guys, all those to the extent that you use borrowed money to buy the house, you're paying interest on that house, but there's no rental income. So you better have those housing prices going, shooting up real fast. Otherwise, it's going to be a problem, right? So this is the same concept. So basically, this concept should be there in your mind that whatever you're going to sell, you're going to borrow and sell. Okay. And whatever you're buying, you are putting it on as an investment. Okay. Uh, if it's a currency you just put it on deposit okay uh, if it's a house you put it out on rent you need to try and earn a return on whatever you bought is this clear is everyone following okay sorry. yeah sorry we have a question uh, yeah garvin uh, has a question sir i have a question that if i want to limit my profits also so i should use a spot uh, spot order or i should use something else no so your question is about the the profit part of it okay so let's take the same example so now i've gone long at 267 and i put in a stop at 264 we'll take the same example okay is this clear everyone okay so um i've gone long i've taken care of my downside risk okay so i can't lose more than uh, say around four three dollars uh, three rupees per share okay i've taken care of my downside risk now as to where where you will place the stake profit okay we can get into the details of that we can have more compl complicated uh, calculations on that but ideally it should be several multiples of your risk okay if you're risking three dollar three rupees per share you should not be happy with just making three rupees per share you should make like a several multiples of three rupees okay so let's say in this case that i want to sell it at 311 i think it's going to go back and retest 311 so i want to play, give an instruction to the system that if uh, the stock of tcs goes to 311 then i want to take profit let's call it take profit so this clear okay so the way you place that is yes this is also important for your management of your position so now what i do now this is what is this order now this take profit order when i have a long position my position is long this take profit order will be a sell order or a buy order sell order take profit is also a sell order okay stop loss is also a sell order take profit is also a sell order okay so now you come to this other definition of the order which is that we have uh, obviously now and again let's not go to the actual official definition but let's work with the uh, logic first okay so this is the take profit order okay so obviously now the question is this uh, this is going to be a sell order this sell order is going to be above the market or below the market above the market when my position is long it will be above the market when my position is short it will be below the market because it has to be something where uh, it has to be at a level at which i capture some profit so if i've gone long at the market then the sell order for a long position the take profit sell order for a long position is going to be above the market is this clear everyone follows okay so it will be above the market so i've already identified the price by looking at the chart so it's 311 so in this case this will be called a limit sell order okay so the essentially now if we understand the definition we can look at the definition of a limit order order types okay this is a limit order okay so these are used uh, i've used um, stop order o is for order this is a limit order and this is a market order 
so actually we can now use this to understand this okay we can freeze this view for a while you can look at it okay essentially this is what it is you can it's a easy way to understand the definition of now you already have a flavor now we can go and look at the mechanical definitions so that we are kind of like memorizing it but it's still not that bad because you have gone through the logic okay a little bit so now you already know the definition of a stop order it's an easy way to remember just like we covered speculators hedgers and arbitragers with respect to market risk remember that arbitragers don't want to take any market risk hedgers want to reduce their market risk and the speculators want to increase their market risk okay so easy way to remember right similarly we are going to remember uh, we are going to understand these three types of basic orders okay stop orders uh, limit orders and market orders and we are going to understand these three orders uh, by reference to the price at which is uh, uh, I mean whether the price at which these orders are executed uh, is it more favorable less favorable or as favorable as the market price everybody understands what the market price is okay so like the market price of dollar yen right now is 108.5353 this is the market price okay so usually when we talk about one market price because we're not talking about bid and offer we're talking about the mid price okay i seem to have lost the connection okay but we are talking typically about the mid price okay so uh let's say let's say uh <clears throat> 250 so in the case of uh, tesla it's 241 uh 50 90 so it's a, let's say 70 or something like that okay so that's your market price so everybody understands the market price it's the price at which the asset is trading at the current level okay at the, at the current period of time that's the market price so we understand these three terms limit order market order and stop order how are we going to understand them with respect to whether the execution will be at a price which is more favorable less favorable or as favorable as the market price okay so first we understand market order pretty obvious a market order is one where the price is executed at okay oh i don't have the internet so um at current market price okay right so a market order is this is very obvious because it's called a market order so the market order will execute your transaction it could be a sell transaction or it could be a buy transaction okay it will execute your transaction at the current market price is this clear first category is clear market order always at the current market price that's why to simplify our decision making i have uh, assumed that everything we are doing we are doing at the current market to make life simpler okay now what is a limit order limit order essentially will enter your trader position at a more favorable price than the current market this is how you should remember it then you can flip it around for your buy sell situations because when you are buying more favorable is above the market or below the market if i am buying if i am going to be buying then obviously i want to buy below the market okay and when i am selling it will be above the market so limit buy order will always be below the market limit sell order will always be above the market because what do we know we know that a limit order always executes at a price more favorable than the current market that's all we need to remember okay so then we can so don't separately memorize your long term long uh, your sell order and buy order what you remember is that limit order is always at a price more favorable than the current market and uh, market order is at the same as the current market okay and then you come to the stop order we can see how the definition is arranged okay the stop order is kind of like the opposite of the limit order so if the limit order is always executing at a price more favorable than the current market then the stop order has to be the opposite it will always execute at a price less favorable than the current market are you following yes simple way to remember you just practice the framework a little bit then you'll get the feel of it so i don't think we are memorizing too much which you understand the logic but this is a good way to define uh, orders okay it helps you to understand these orders and remember them easily okay so limit order less favor uh, more favorable and uh, stop order less favorable okay so that's why you can see so now we come back 
to uh, the order that Garvit was talking about. He wants to place an order to capture the profit where he has gone long on ITC at 267. He wants, yeah, 311. He wants to sell at 311. At 311, he wants to capture his profit. Okay, no more participation required. He wants to just take his money and run. Okay, so now this is going to be a limit sell order so obviously this is an order to capture profit so it is so how do you work the logic first you look at the chart and you can see clearly that if you have gone long at 267 and you're selling at 311 you're making a profit or loss profit profit okay so you're making a profit so therefore you're set and and what is good this is also going to be a sell order okay so it's going to be a sell order above the current market okay so if it's a sell order above the current market will it be a limit order or stop order limit, limit, order. limit order because it's more favorable than the current market okay so therefore you go into this and you're going to be a seller so you should hit the bid or the offer you should hit the bid the moment you hit the bid it gives you some defaults check that the position size is the same your position is 100 shares this is okay do you want it to be day it has to be gtc because it has to be now you can go on holiday after this okay once you place a gtc order it will remain yes yeah value we have to change this will be limit or stop limit okay this will have to change now we have to change this to 311 okay is this clear 310 311 whatever it is okay all right is this clear now so check everything sell order limit order amount position size is the same make sure gtc is there and this you don't have a choice at this stage and for this software we only have nse data then now you transmit okay now you get the green signal that means ib is watching your order okay is this clear they have um, yeah okay all right is this clear now to everybody how you have essentially you have bracketed your position by not entering a bracket order but individually entering the two legs now you're bracketed your order you have now you're taken care of now you can go on holiday for this trade as far as this trade is concerned you can forget about it until you revise your view okay yes what is the question how will make profit on short selling same thing i've short i've gone short 2000 5000 shares of tcs okay so let's call up tcs how do you make a profit on short selling very simple you have gone short very simple so you have gone short that means you have to make a profit the price has to drop or rise price has to drop if no no you have gone short you have gone short right okay or even if you are thinking of selling doesn't matter if you have gone short or you are thinking of selling either way uh, the market has to drop for you to make money after you sell the market has to drop for you to make money right so in this case uh, i have sold tcs 5000 shares of tcs so i have to place uh, if you go back now this we can't see much here let me go back to um, 15 minutes right so i have sold now at some point if I, you're talking about how to make profit when you have one shot okay wherever i've sold it obviously i have to take a view on where i want to exit you have to look at the chart and form a view as to where you want to exit okay and there uh, at that point you will place an order now this time this will be a what type of order limit what limit buy or limit sell if i've gone short it has to be a limit buy because i have a short position it has to close out my position both the take profit and the stop loss orders would supposed are supposed to close out your position okay so this is i've gone short so it's be a limit buy order okay so what i would do here is maybe if i want to get out here but here doesn't look very good it looks like it's going to go up and rise above this so let's say i don't have a strong view on the short position so i want to say decide at 21 oh 21 uh 2100 okay so if i place 2100 what i do is tcs now i'm buying i should hit the bid or offer Ask, 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 ask price okay so i hit the ask price it gives me an order first thing i do is change this to gtc i want to go to 2100 okay it's a buy order 100 shares no but it's not 100 it's not good enough i need to buy 5000 shares okay so i have 5000 shares i'm buying at 2100 check all this okay 
it's a limit by order it's a limit by order because it's a buy order which is below the current market below the current market is more favorable for buying or less favorable more favorable for buying so it's a limit order because i'm buying at a more favorable price better than the current market then i transfer everyone is following yes sir okay all right so now i've got this order in place so we'll see if this gets executed but i happen to think this is actually going on so uh, a couple of other points that i would just make is don't you have a total of 50 stocks available to you okay the other important thing in in speculative trading it in if you are learning to speculate like a professional first thing is obviously pre-plan your risk control your risk orders always in the market no discretion on that point another very important point you have 50 shares to look at 50 markets to look at don't feel compelled to trade if you don't have a strong view okay there's no obligation to trade there are 50 stocks look at some stocks if you don't have a strong view move on to the next stock see where you have a view that's another very important of speculative trading importance of speculative trading important aspect of speculative trading do not trade unless you have a strong view okay i'll just give you one last point so this is a very important let me just give you this lesson you guys have heard of pokers have you heard of poker yes. one of your seniors sanish chabra is actually not taking placement because he wants to be a professional poker player so it's a very good uh, i think it's a good initiative i just told him make sure you document everything so one of the important rules in poker is if you don't have a strong hand then you don't play you don't bet you just fold okay so it's a very important thing that comes from poker strategy a lot of uh, hedge funds hire professional poker players because this is a very important skill to know that if you don't have a strong view don't play just wait until you get a strong view okay now you keep on practicing with your charts by looking at your charts and trying to form views on the market but if you don't have a strong view don't play this is clear move on to the next stock you have 50 markets is this clear yes, sir. okay anybody has any technical questions then i won't close the yeah sir, what um, is the chart that you showed that uh, all the offers were there above the market and below uh, the market. give him the mic yeah what was that ch uh, chart called i forgot the name uh, sir so uh, as you bid, as your order was placed green that 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 would also be shown there no no i i'm not able i'm not able to follow your question that what is the chart i showed you with all the offers were below the market where all the offers are uh, it was some different software no sir uh, you showed it was a web based uh, charting app bonds bonds market was it a uh, yes, was it a web based uh, charting application yes, or was it a software it was a charting application finviz i don't remember i don't think i showed you charts from finviz no uh, was it uh, this sir so in uh, in that chart also i asked the question that um, how uh, people can manipulate the market that if they have uh, they can see that people are selling that okay okay so so what i showed you was basically this what i showed you was the order book yeah, yeah order, order book right. okay so if you right click yeah um, trading tools book trader book trader so i wanted to ask that yeah so let's launch the book trader first yeah. okay so here's your book trader all right now you were asking about so yeah. this is the market right now that my order is you have placed the order is green so that order uh, it, that would be shown in the order book or not yeah yeah your order like if you look at any of these two we don't have positions right now in uh, in the foreign currencies okay. but we have position in indian stocks okay <laughs> so if somebody looked at the itc order book your these two orders that you have they would be in the order book somewhere yeah that, this one is very far away 311 is very yeah, far away I was it is technically in the order book yeah it would be in the order book if somebody looks at it they'll see your yeah, yeah, i just want to that's your question yes okay. yes tanya you have a question you have a question technical question this is actually they are marking to market every day so i think this is coming from a daily basis like say for instance if you have gone short if you have gone short uh, 
say yesterday okay uh, you were gone short yesterday at 270 uh, 228 okay then today it has dropped to uh, 21 uh, 2080 yes then this 200 of profit is already shown yesterday now from today they are taking you as being short at 22 at 2080 so when it rises here this is only taking care of the movement that today will that will, yeah so it will show you actually as a loss now because there's 2080 here and 2150 so it's, you're losing money but actually you're still making money from here so the way you have to yeah the way you have to deal with this is you have to set up your own spreadsheet for your own practice and your own sense of the market and your positions you should set up your own spreadsheet set up a spreadsheet where you have all these things noted down okay like you have 5000 shares of TCS so you should have you bought it at this price how many shares what was the initial risk ideally you should have all this information that's how you get a practice uh, get your practice and so you said you should limit your risk so what if i want to nullify my risk like at the price i bought it so i put my surplus at that price only that's not a good idea because the market does not it has to be your stops have to be market relevant stops you notice how i was placing stops when i went long tcs around this time okay at that time i was using bg sir's account i had gone long around this time around 21 I had a view that it was going higher but I placed my stop not at this level I placed it at this level which was a previous low okay from which a new high was made so if the market went below this level it would have proved my assumption about the continuation of the uptrend wrong that's why the stop is placed there so a stop has to be always placed at a point at least the stop okay uh, at, has to be placed at a point which is meaningful from uh, 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 meaningful in the sense of what the market is saying about the status of the trend are you are you following what i'm saying that when this market goes if you if you take this as a 60 minute chart it's an important question and then i want to answer it uh, see i go along over here hey, shut the door yes shut the door i go along here 2104 why do i place a stop here because this if it goes below this then it clearly proves that this uptrend which began from here has been neutralized because the pattern of higher lows is broken the moment a new low is made below this point that's why my stop here the stop has to be at a level which is meaningful okay uh, as meaningful with respect to what the market is saying about the status of the trend this level is meaningful because if the market goes below this level the market is saying that this status of the trend here which was incomplete that has actually become neutralized are you following so i understand your impulse for protection of loss and wanting to place it at the point at which you have gone long but it's a very important question and the answer is also very important that the market does not care about the price at which you are long or short the price at which you are long or short has no relevance from the point of view of the status of the trend and what the market is saying about the state so stop has to be always meaningful are you following you follow the answer so this never place it at the point at which your light or at your long or short because that has no meaning to the market this has meaning to the market in fact even this has meaning to the market the new high the moment it goes above the new high that means the trend is the market is further confirming see it did not go below this low yeah it did not go below this low and it went above eventually above this which means the market is further confirming that your view about the continuation of the uptrend was correct so these are all meaningful uh, market uh, movements beyond a certain price but what price you are long or short at that is of no meaning to the market so for the project like uh, we need to have some profit yeah so you need to have some uh, use your mic so that for yeah project, uh, we mic is not coming through for the project like we need to make some profit yeah right? ideally hopefully yes. yeah so for 
that Tarun will make a loss. So, Tarun has already promised that Tarun will make a loss. <laughs> that was a loss. No, no, I'm just pulling his leg. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to assure that I do not make losses. I at least maintain that position which I have been already given my account. No, no, but that's not that, the right way. Yeah. That's not the right way to approach trading. You have to take some risk. Okay. So your stop, you cannot violate this basic rule that the stop has to always be at a point which is meaningful from uh, from the perspective of what the market is saying about the status of the trend so ideally in a in technical trading the stop always has to be at a previous high or low now as i said you can choose what high you want to keep this low or this low or this low that is your choice but it should always be at a previous high or low because that's what neutralizes uptrends and downtrends. I mean, it's the breach of those levels that neutralizes uptrends and downtrends. Is this clear? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. Clear. You have also your technical question. Okay. Yeah. Voice not coming through the mic. Yeah. <laughs> you have a problem. Yes. No, no, you can, we have done that. So, so, so you can see here where I am long ITC at 267. I have two orders. I have a stop order at 264, 263, 95, 264. Okay. I have a stop order at 264. The objective of that order is to limit my losses because I have no way of knowing which way the market will go. Uh, after I go along, you have to cover both the contingencies. In fact, this one is not important, I would say. I'll show you later on why you don't really need limit orders. You don't need to take, take, off or take profit orders. You can just trail your stock. That we'll discuss later. But let's assume that But what is most important is the stop order. Because when you go long, let's say when you go long here, okay, at ITC, you guys have technical questions, Chuk? No, sir, it is a general question on project. Okay, no, that also you can ask. One minute. I would like to capture it as long as my battery doesn't go down. My battery is always in a precarious position. Okay, we have a little bit, okay, 44%. Okay, so I went short ITC, okay. Now, I went in this example that we have here, I'm long ITC, okay, at 267. So at this point, I don't know what's going to happen, whether it's going to go up or down. So I have to cover both the contingencies and especially I have to cover my loss side because if I make 20 rupees of profit or 30 rupees of profit, it's not a big deal. Whether I make 30 rupees or 20 rupees or 15 rupees, that's not a big deal. That's not going to kill me. But what will kill me is my losses. So I have to protect my losses. So, so therefore I have to place some point at some point below the current market where my losses keep growing yeah. at some point i have to place a stop order to take me out of my position and stop my losses yeah, is that I clear would, yeah, that part is clear yes, that one is clear. now you're talking about what you were saying earlier i just respond to what you were saying here yeah. earlier why not just place a take profit order and forget about it forget about the stop loss but how do you know the moment you've gone long at 267 the next instant the price could just start dropping and it may never come back it may just keep dropping six five six three six two six one it keeps on going low keeps on going low and never comes up how do you know what's going to happen so if you just keep an order to take profit that's not good enough yeah in fact i would even go to the like what we are going to develop in the next class the take profit is not important it's a stop loss that is important yeah we are going to explain we are going to have a way of capturing profit also but the point i'm trying to make is that you don't even need limit orders you can just operate with stop orders and market orders in fact you may make it i'm trying to make it very very simple is this clear that's based on your view in this case i've taken a view that it's going to go at i'm going to exit at 311 depends on your view like for instance like tcs 
I bought TCS because my view was that it's going much higher. So I think I won't take profit until it goes to 2300, 2400 and we'll, we'll look at the other aspect of that later on. How to operate only with stops. Are you clear now? Okay, Chuk, what is your question quickly? Your question about the project. Use the mic. Sir, it is written the project, not at all. No, no, it doesn't matter. We'll capture it so that I don't have to give the same answer to the other guys. Okay, ask your question through the mic. Sir, uh, for that official project trading account, we can begin trading since Monday or are we supposed to keep that empty for them? Because we no, are no. practicing on the you, practice accounts. No, no, no. You are supposed to have started trading from the this previous Monday. Monday. This Monday, that is two days ago. Yeah or three days ago hmm. you're supposed to have already started trading in your project trading account sir for example our practice account makes more money than the no, that's all history now practice account is history no no you can keep on is practicing it, but it, like, it has is it like the best of the accounts or like no 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 no, no, no. That you sent you the final only the project trading account which you're supposed to trade in from two three days ago three days ago hmm. from this last monday hmm. only your that's why i asked for the account numbers hmm. okay that I want to see those account, I want to lock in those account numbers and later on I will look at only at the performance of those account numbers for your project trading. So please make it clear to everybody, all you guys, you should have already started trading in your project trading accounts from the previous Monday, two, three, three days ago. This is clear. Question. How do we check our final position on interactive broker side? For example, you should also keep no no you should keep your own track of positions. Set up a spreadsheet. Let's see where your spreadsheets are. Set up a spreadsheet and keep your own positions. Okay. Whatever it is. I bought TCS, put the ticker, TCS minus 5k position. Okay. Then what is the price at which I went short? Maybe 2150. Okay. What was my initial risk? Maybe I put a total risk of maybe 10,000 rupees. Okay. You should keep track. You should maintain a spreadsheet on your own. Aside from interactive brokers, that will help you to maintain, uh, keep track of your positions, your total PL. Can't you see it on the interactive broker? You can, but then since they are using mark to market from a day to day basis, you will get confused. They are marking to market on a daily basis, so they are showing your profit and loss uh, only from the previous day, the close of the previous day. So, therefore, what I'm saying is you follow this. This is part of your discipline in your trade. Every trade you do, keep a spreadsheet. What's the big deal of keeping a spreadsheet you need to have a handle on your own positions this is called a blotter this is also something to learn this is called a traders blotter okay blotter as in learn this term also this is called a traders blotter okay a blotter is nothing but something like this not trade uh, let's call it whatever it is okay blotter so blotter is nothing but this TCS minus 5000 at this eventually when you buy back you write you can either write against this row or again TCS plus 5 every trade you do you write down all the trades that's called a blotter but in case if you want to see it on the interactive broker that side where can you see it you can see it here you can see your net position here here net position here can you see the position? So this is in terms of shares. I'm saying in terms of the, the 10 lakh cash that we had, how much cash we finally have now. Okay, that you have to see the value of the position that you have to just multiply. This for that you need to you for do your own. Uh, you can look at this figure also. You can look at the account. Okay. But the account is in US dollars. So this will be a little confusing. You can look at your total cash figure here. You can look at this, this part of the account. Okay. And don't use your phone uh, based software. Don't use your phone. This is your total cash. Okay. Stock value is minus 10 lakhs. Okay. Because you are short. Okay. So look at this part. But I, I would say that for the sake of your own practice, set up a own, set up your own blotter. Is this clear? Set up your own blotter. This will be give. This will give you good practice. Okay. You don't have any other classes now. Only lunch. Okay. Or you're going up. Okay. So now we can close this. So please make.